Keep in mind that the gradient correction with MGC is based on observational data. This means that the quality of the data in the reference image will determine how the correction turns out. We're going to correct this image using a gradient scale of 1024 pixels. First, we uncheck the Show Gradient Model box so that we can skip that step. Now, we're going to compare this result with what we get if we use a gradient scale of 2048 pixels. When we compare the two, we can see that the color is more uniform with a 2048 pixel scale. These greenish structures disappear, for example. However, the two versions correct the large scale gradients equally well. We should always use the highest gradient scale that corrects the image well so that we don't have to rely so much on the quality of the reference data. MGC cancels out the signal from the objects in the image, leaving only the gradients. We need to measure the brightness of the objects in the target image and compare it with the brightness of the objects in the reference image. By doing this, we can equalize the brightness and remove the objects from the target image, leaving only the gradients. In theory, this should work well, but it can't be done perfectly in real life. That's why MGC also lets you adjust the scale factors manually. You can do this for each channel separately, or you can move the three sliders simultaneously by pressing and holding Control. You can often make adjustments by simply looking at the resulting image, as it will be more uniform. Let's try with a few different values. If we switch between the different results, we can see that the lower the scale factor, the more uniform the correction. It's particularly noticeable in this corner. The best result is somewhere between 0.4 and 0.2. Why do we need to adjust these values manually? It's because in most cases, the target image and the reference image are highly incompatible so it's impossible to find the correct scale factor using photometry. We're going to correct this H-alpha image, which we corrected with a scale of 512 in the previous video. We select the H-alpha channel of the Mars database and apply the process. Looking at the gradient model, we can see remnants of some objects. For example, we can clearly see remnants of M17, and the cloud on the right, M24, is visible here too. What happens if we change the scale factor? Let's lower it and compare the two models. This is with a scale factor of 1, and this is with a scale factor of 0.5. The objects are more visible here. We therefore need to adjust the value in the other direction. This is with a scale factor of 1, and this is with a scale factor of 1.5. Now we're going in the right direction. Here, M17 has practically disappeared, and this dark area is looking lighter. Let's lower the scale factor a little. Here, we've struck a good balance. We're never going to completely eliminate all traces of the objects. 
It is also important to consider how much these small remnants really affect the image. These areas actually have a very high surface brightness, so these weak remnants will barely affect them. Let's correct the image now. And let's reset to 1 to compare. With a scale factor of 1, we're overcorrecting these bright areas and also the nebula. The corner looks very flat, but this part is overcorrected. With a scale factor of 2.3, we're correcting the corner, but the dark nebulas aren't being overcorrected. If we compare the two, we can see that there is actually a small gradient here. With a scale factor of 1, we also made this dark area brighter, as well as overcorrecting this whole bright area. This result is therefore much more correct. We can correct the gradients in this image very well with a scale of 1024 or 2048 pixels, but we're going to lower this setting to 512 to exaggerate the object remnants. The bright stars have been inverted, and the dark nebulas look brighter. Let's decrease the scale factor to 0 0.8. If we compare the two, we can see that the objects are gradually disappearing. Let's try 0 0.6. Zero point four. Zero point two. All the way down to zero point one. With a scale factor of 1, the objects are inverted, but this is gradually corrected as the scale factor decreases. The best scale factor is probably around 0 0.4 or 0 0.2. There's another setting in MGC that can help minimize the influence of objects on the model, and it's called structure separation. The higher the value here, the greater the degree of separation between the structures. The lower the value, the more cohesive the structures. When there is more cohesion, the objects with more contrast start to disappear. Let's try with a value of 1 instead of the default value of 3. This is with 3, and this is with 1. The objects have a much smaller effect on the model when the structure separation value is 1. With this image, we need to use a scale of at least 1024 because the gradients are very well represented at that scale. This is with 1024, and this is with 512. With 512, the objects have more of an effect on the model. Let's uncheck the Show Gradient Model box and apply the process. Finally, let's compare with the default values.
With the default values, we were overcorrecting this whole area of subtle nebulas, which we've corrected very well by changing the scale factor and structure separation. By modifying those settings, we've also corrected the halo around this bright star more effectively. Let's apply these settings to the main view and neutralize the sky background. Here's the image before the gradient correction, and here it is after the gradient correction and sky background neutralization. Walk with me. Let's leave the past behind say you go don't make me wait